the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let us say this portion of Psalm 116 responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. So our, so we got our first reading is from someone else besides me. <laughs> right. From, it's from Brad. Uh, I'm Brad. From there you go. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and, and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Here ends the reading. The word of the God, the word, thank, the word of the Lord. Thanks. The first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is, is now, 
and will be oh, yeah. Amen. Our second lesson is from Luke 24, 13 to 35. <clears throat> now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was the prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. And some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. And then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? From the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? And that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. <clears throat> and they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us say together, Canticle 20, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give we you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, we've just heard two stories after um, Jesus' death and resurrection. The first one is actually set a much later uh, and the one that we're going to talk about today the as Cleopas it's a great road story isn't it it's set in the afternoon um, um, on the day of the resurrection and so they've already heard Cleopas as you heard they've heard that there are some um, the women are talking about uh, Jesus appearing to them but of course the men don't we're not going to go into this, but you know, the men don't really believe them. And 
Cleopas and this companion have decided to leave because everyone is scared. The disciples, their companions, everyone that's with them, they're actually hiding out up in an upper room. And for some reason, Cleopas and this companion have decided to just leave. They're not going to stay. And so they're out on the road and I would imagine they're terrified. I imagine they're discouraged. I mean, they say they are sad, but I think it's probably more than that, don't you? I mean, they're on the road. They've just left everyone, left them behind. And in fact, maybe they're even running away from it all. And suddenly with them, as you hear in this story, there is somebody to walk with them and explains everything. It's a great story. It's a road story, right? We've heard lots of road story. Think of Frodo and Bilbo and even Star Wars and Star Trek. Think of all these road stories we know of and the helpers along the way and the strange creatures. We've all been in them. And we're all of us on a road trip right now. It's not exactly the kind of road trip we love where we're out on the road. It's a road trip around our house, isn't it? You know, from the bathroom to the bedroom, to the kitchen, to the living room. And we're lucky because we have a road to be in, a safe harbor, so to speak, a nest. We're lucky. And there are people out there that aren't so lucky. But nevertheless, we are on a road trip here together and scared and frightened. So we have some feel, we have some understanding about what Cleopas and this companion must be going through. So it's easy to go back and find a road trip. So I'm gonna tell you about my road trip one time. This road trip I was on was after my mother died and my dad had died just a couple of years before. And so my brother and sister and I had cleaned out the house, right? We'd had to go through everything. Well, we had gone through everything and split it up and I had rented a truck in Oklahoma and was going to drive it across to California, uh, full of the things that was all that was left of my home, right? So I was pretty grief stricken and dismayed and I was in not a great place. And if it had been up to me, I would have just probably stopped on the road somewhere and just pouted for days. But I couldn't do that because one of the things that mother had left behind was an extremely uh, difficult little wire haired terrier named Bubba. And Bubba was a horrible little dog. There's no getting around it. He was a terrible dog and he only loved mother. And I was terrified that if I left Bubba behind that, um, he would go to the ASPCA because God knows no one else wanted him. And though I had two cats and a dog already, I got stuck with Bubba. So Bubba was not a good traveling companion. Um, he wanted out, he wanted to run home and every chance he got, he tried to get away. And I was already grief stricken and <laughs> numb. And then I had this dog and trying to get away from me at every moment, even though I was trying to save his life. And so he got away in the biggest, meanest, most frightening looking um, motorcycle gang member caught him, completely covered with tattoos and chains. I was terrified of this guy, but he had my dog and by God, he caught him and brought him back and said something lovely like, cute little dog ma'am or something, I don't know, handed him back. He could have had him for all I care. But anyway, little things like this, the whole road home. I couldn't really get out of the car. I had to stop at drive-ins the whole way across. It was one thing after the other with his dog. He kept getting away. I had trouble finding places to stay with him once they saw him. They didn't want him in their hotel. It was that kind of a road trip. And when I got home to the two daughters who had not missed me at all, I might add, I arrived with this huge van, this appalling dog and sat down and all I needed was some sympathy, you know, a little loving kindness about what a horrible trip it had been. 
And instead, what I got was laughter and hysteria. They thought it was the funniest thing they had ever heard. Of course they did, because they could see the angels. They could see Jesus, right? They could see everything, all the things that had gone right. They could see everybody that had shown up and done everything that needed to happen all along the way. Everywhere. God was there. Of course he was all the way along. And I never saw it. Never. Not once. But they saw it instantly. I'm still astonished at how good they were at it. It seems to me that that's one of the great points of this story. I mean, it's easy to see it really, isn't it? That Jesus is always with us and God is always with us. And it's really hard for us to see it. But I think the other point is always too, is that we have to hold on to our hope. And I think that's what I had lost too. I had lost my hope. I had lost my joy. I had lost all kinds of things that I needed to hold on to. And I hadn't been holding on to. I had just gotten too frightened and too unimaginative and too stricken to notice all these things that I need to hold on to. And I'm trying to remember those things now. I'm trying not to get to that place and trying to remember that God is always with us, as we well know, Emmanuel, right? That God loves us so much. And that God, God is calling us to hold on to our hope right now, which is really hard to do. And to remember that we will get through this. We really will. And that we'll be better for it in the end. And that's even harder to imagine. And you know what? That even if we don't do that, even if we don't manage any of those things, even if we just sit and pout on the couch and eat bonbons, which actually I have done a couple of times, even if we do that, God's going to come after us, isn't he? Because that's what happened to Cleopas and his companion. They ran away and they gave it all up and they lost their hope. And God came after him anyway. So there we are. We're going to be okay. I miss you all so much. I can't begin to tell you. It's just awful without you. I can't wait to see you again. We're going to be okay. Hold on to your hope. I love you very much. Amen. Let us now confess our faith together as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Oh, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. 
Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Okay. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Made alive to God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O God, in Christ's death and resurrection, your church is reborn. Bless your people in every nation. Raise up to witness together to your undying love for the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and, Sus and for Susan and Jennifer, our bishops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the resurrection of your Son means life for every nation. Show us that promise and hope. Heal oh. nations scarred by injustice and greed. Give hope to those ravaged by violence. We pray for our leaders, especially Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, and Justin, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O oh God, your son healed many who were oppressed. Bless those who heal and show compassion in Jesus' name, even as we pray for the many among us who are in need, especially Nancy, Dick, Mike, Lucy, Ted, Catherine, Diane, Bruce, Aggie, Natalie, Joanne, Anne, and Frank. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, in the waters of baptism, you call us by name and raise us to new life in you. Renew us with all faith, hope, and love that we might be Christ's risen body in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give thanks for the saints whose lives proclaim the victory of your love. With them, give us courage to follow our crucified and risen Lord. Until all things are gathered in his name, we pray for those who have died. And Young, mother of Brian Young. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of global pandemic, O oh God, we hold before you our fear, our confusion, our sense of disruption, our anger, and our hope. We pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those who have died, for those currently ill, and for those recovering, and for those in mourning. We pray for doctors and nurses, therapists and technicians, and all support staff. 
we pray for researchers and public health officials across the nation. For those suffering economically and for students whose studies have been disrupted. We pray for those most vulnerable to this disease now. O oh God, and for all efforts to protect and shield them from infection, as we mem remember our many parishioners and loved ones in this category. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I uh, conclude with a collect that derives its inspiration from the gospel for today, the road to Emmaus. It comes from the service for evening prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. Let us now say together the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all that you have made. We bless you for our creation, mm -hmm. preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a blessed Sunday, blessed Lord's Day, this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, just a couple of announcements to call to mind. I hope you noticed in the e-blast that was sent out on Thursday, I believe it was, uh, the announcement that sadly, but unsurprisingly, we have to postpone our parish retreat at Shrinemont this year. Uh, it, as of right now, would still fall within the governor's stay at home order. So Shrinemont has offered us at least three other possibilities and the vestry has thought the most democratic thing would be to simply invite the parish to weigh in on which option would work best for you. So there was a, uh, I believe it was a doodle poll sent out. There are a couple of ways to respond to it. I would ask that you do that as quickly as possible because there are and will be some other parishes vying for those open slots. So we want to make this decision quickly. Also, we have put out the word several times, uh, Thankfully, I uh, haven't yet had any takers, but if any of you are in any particular need during this time, uh, be it uh, financial, emotional, uh, let us know and we will see what we can do to help. That's part of what we do at Emmanuel. Uh, and many have offered to be a support should that be required. So 
uh, you may reach out to me directly uh, by email, Alexander at icoh.net. I also would be remiss were I not to lead with a uh, word of thanks for so many of you, for your, your prayers, for your support of this parish, in your, in your giving, uh, in your uh, being a word of support to each other, certainly to me. Um, I want to remind you that the opportunities uh, for continuing your pledge are, are, are always before us as our, our, our bills and obligations. I'm going to be sending out an update this week to the parish about our life in general during this time. And there, there's a lot of good news to report. Like everyone else, there's also frustration and pain to report, but we're gonna to try to lead with the good news of, of God showing up and, and walking with us as you heard in the sermon. So uh, we're continuing to gather the mail. So you may simply uh, send uh, checks to the parish office, or you may contribute to our parish webpage, uh, the, the Tithely button. It's, it's prominent and easy, easy to use. If you have any trouble with that, uh, please let us know. And I hope you'll be able to stay right after this service for, uh, for at least a while for coffee hour as we, as we see faces and hear voices and, and share with each other. Um, sometimes it's nothing more than tips for places to go or things that someone has found helpful. Uh, let us conclude. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.